guys. Here we are again. We're now ready for chapter five. And chapter five is called competition. And I think you all know what competition is. Rivalry in the marketplace. So that's definitely a like a business type definition. But you've all been to recess. You've played a game of checkers or Monopoly. You know what competition is, right? Right. Okay. So you're someone that you're working against to complete the task. So I want you to think about, ooh, spit. Spit comes up in this chapter. And that's exciting. What does the spit vowel tell you about Evan and Jesse's relationship? And why could the end of chapter five be considered a turning point in the plot? Hmm. And how do you know? Ooh. All right. Let's see what happens. It's exciting. All right. Chapter five competition. Dinner that night at the Tresky's was quiet. So the explosion that followed seemed especially loud. It was Jesse's turn to clear and scrape the dishes. Evan's turn to wash and stack. Evan looked at the pile of dirty dishes on his left. Jessie was ahead. She was always ahead when it was her turn to clear. But tonight, it felt like she was taunting him. To Evan, every plate scraping sound sounded like, can't keep up, can't keep up. Evan was scrubbing the casserole pan when Jessie stacked the last dirty dish by his elbow. Then she stuck her hands under the faucet to rinse without even saying excuse me and shook her hands practically right in Evan's face and said, so how much money did you make? That was it. He couldn't hold it in any longer. Why do you do it, huh? Why do you have to run the one thing I had going? For a second, Evan wasn't sure if he meant the lemonade stand or Meg or Morty. In a mixed up way, he meant both. And there was no way he was going to tell Jesse that after paying back his mother for the four cans of lemonade, one can of grape juice, one bottle of ginger ale, she'd be pretty irritated when she came down from the office and there wasn't a single cold drink in the house. He had walked away with $2.11. On top of that, he was pretty sure Scott had kept the $5 bill they'd earned. Well, what was Evan supposed to do? Asked Scott to turn his pockets inside out. Evan hadn't kept track of the sales, so he couldn't be sure. What I do, why'd I do it? Why do you do it? Why do you invite that jerk over here for a lemonade stand? Shouted Jesse. And how come you wouldn't let me play? You're the one who was mean. You're such a show off said Evan. You always have to let everyone know that you're the smart one. I wasn't showing off. I was just trying to have a little fun. Is that against the law? You wouldn't do a lemonade stand with me. Then I won't do a lemonade stand with you. I'll do one with my friend Megan instead. You can not be her friend. You cannot be her friend, shouted Evan. Why not? Because you're a little kid. You don't even be belong in the fourth grade. And because you're just an annoying show of pests and no one likes you. The words felt like disgusting spiders running out of his mouth. They were horrible. But it felt so good to get rid of them. Then Evan saw Jesse's lip tremble. Uh-oh. Jesse was a howler. She didn't cry often. And she didn't cry long. But when she did, it was loud. Mom would come down from her office. Evan would catch the blame. Unfair. But Jesse didn't lose. Didn't let loose. Instead, she stood as tall as her runty height would allow her and said, Megan likes me. She invited me over to her house tomorrow. We're going to make another lemonade stand and earn twice what we did today. Oh, that was it. She was going to run everything, show him up right in front of Megan, even before the school year started, make Megan think he was just some stupid loser who couldn't even beat out his baby sister in a lemonade stand. Evan boiled over. I wouldn't count on it, Juicy, he said. Jesse hated that nickname, and Evan only used it when he had to. 
I'm going to have a lemonade stand every day until school starts, and I'm going to earn a hundred bucks by the end of summer, enough for an iPod. Oh, please. Like, you could even, even uh, if you wanted to, said Jesse. Meg and I are already made 12 bucks each today. We could have a hundred dollars like that. Jesse snapped her fingers. And then what? said Evan. You'll lock it up in your lockbox and save it till you're 50 years old. You're the biggest miser on the planet. Jessie stiffened up. Her mouth made a funny O. But then she put a hand on her hip and smirked at Evan. For your information, I'm going to make a $100 donation to charity. Evan snorted. Yeah, right. What charity? There was a long pause. And then Jessie said, as smooth as whipped cream. The Animal Rescue League. Megan and I talked about it today. You don't even like animals, said Evan. Everybody likes animals, shouted Jesse. And I'm going to give them a hundred dollars so you can't ever call me a miser again. I hope I never have to talk to you again, shouted Evan. Hey, a sharp voice called from the stairs. Mrs. Tresky had a pencil stuck in her hair and a worried look on her face. I can hear you two all the way up in the attic with the air conditioner on high. What's up? Evan looked at Jesse. Jesse looked at Evan. They had taken a vow, a spit vow. Ever since Dad had gone, they had vowed not to fight in front of Mom. It made her sad, sadder even than when Dad left. Nothing, said Evan. Nothing said Jesse. Miss Tresky looked at the two of them. Come on, come out with it. What are you two yelling about? It wasn't a fight, Mom, said Evan. We were just joking around. Yeah, said Jesse. We were goofing. Sorry, sorry you got out of your office. Miss Tresky looked at both of them with her laser eyes. Jesse hung the dish towel on the oven handle and fiddled with it until it was perfectly straight. Evan bent over the casserole pan and scrubbed as if his life depended on it. He scrubbed so hard his elbow bumped the fruit bowl. A cloud of fruit flies rose in the air and then settled back down. Oh, God, said Miss Tresky. Would you look at those fruit flies? Her shoulders slumped. All right, well, I'm going back up. Can you guys handle showers and reading? And then I'll be down to tuck and turn off lights. Sure, Mom, said Jesse. No problem said Evan. Miss Tresky disappeared upstairs. Jesse turned to Evan at the sink. Let's make a bet, she said. Whoever earns a hundred dollars wins, and the loser has to give all their earnings to the winner. Evan shook his head. Not fair, he said. You've already got money saved up. That money doesn't count, said Jesse. We'll start with today's earnings. And it's all got to be from selling lemonade. No mowing lawns or sweeping out garage or anything else. Oh, what if neither one of us makes a hundred, said Evan, not liking the sound of this deal. Then whoever makes the closest to a hundred wins. And even if we both make over a hundred, whoever makes the most money wins the bet. When we do count up the money, asked Evan, Jesse thought about that. When do we count up the money? asked Evan. Jessie thought about that Sunday night, right before the fireworks. She looked straight at Evan. Huh? What do you say? Evan didn't like bets. He really wasn't into competition. He loved to play basketball and always gave it his all. But winning or losing, it didn't make much difference to him. He just liked to play. But this, this was different. This mattered. If he didn't beat Jesse at the bet, if he couldn't win against his little sister in a lemonade war, then Evan thought of the school year stretching in front of him. It was all over. He might as well just give up on everything right now. It's a bet. A hundred bucks by Sunday night. Winner takes all. He shook his wet hands over the sink, dried them on the dish towel, and gave Jesse a most menacing look. Better pray for mercy. Ooh, and the battle begins. Okay, I'll see you at chapter six.